my heart that I wanted to get off for the week. And for anybody, you know, you know, just to get us started, right? Y'all know me. If I ain't nothing else, I'm a fight fan. Like, I love professional boxing. I love combat sports. UFC, you know, boxing, that's just my thing. And two weeks ago, we had um one of the biggest fights in in recent history with my man Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Now, Deontay Wilder, y'all know he is the bronze bomber. This dude is a killer. And Tyson Fury, he ain't no slouch. This dude is straight up one of the most craziest light on his feet heavyweights that's ever stepped into the ring and watching that fight you know it's very very rare that you get a trilogy like a trilogy that lives up to the hype in recent memory i can't even think of a heavyweight trilogy that lived up to the height outside of maybe bo holyfield or Ali Frazier, like those fights are iconic and you just wanted to see them dudes get in the ring one more time. So when Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury had a chance to go back in the ring one more time and complete their trilogy, you never know what you're going to get. People can talk that talk, but when they got in the ring, it was special two weeks ago. Like they went at it and showed you why. They are at the top of their game. And if you just from surface appearance, look at your boy Tyson Fury, Tyson don't look like much. To look at this dude, you would never know that this man is a professional athlete. Like this dude looks out of shape. He don't look, walk, talk. Like it's nothing about this man that you would look at him and say, yo, you know what? I bet you he's a professional athlete. And you damn sure ain't saying that this man is the heavyweight champion of the world. Nothing about this man on the outside looks that way. But when you see Deontay Wilder, like Deontay Wilder, 6'7", 238 pounds, literally, zero body flat this man is a specimen he is just a statue of what men should look like like you could be a grown man get around him and be intimidated just by his looks he looks like when god created man and gave his gift to the world and said i'm going to create man in my image Deontay Wilder pops out like this is the way that this man looks like he is the ultimate package and sometimes we get so caught up on the package itself like because when you look at this guy he's a killer 45 fights 42 wins 41 knockouts he has the highest knockout percentage in the history of the heavyweight division a killer and he looks the freaking part and it's some people you can look at and they are the epitome of what they do they got the perfect package and it's easy to see when somebody is gifted maybe from birth you know it's easy to spot a gift Michael Jackson comes out the womb. He just mm -hmm. sings like a canary. He just naturally has rhythm. Somebody like Mozart comes out the womb and he can look at a piano and just play a symphony. He didn't need to be taught. It's just was his gift. You look at somebody like Jay-Z or Notorious B.I.G. These are guys who could write an entire album right up here in their head. Like 
Most people have to sit down, write, come back to it, get writer's block. They can hear a beat and literally write a song to it on the spot. Those are gifts. And it's easy to spot a gift when you're born with it. And it's definitely easy to spot a gift maybe on Christmas or your birthday and it comes properly wrapped. The packaging looks nice and you walk in and the gift is sitting there. You know it's a gift. But not all gifts come that way. Some gifts, they come through humiliation. Some gifts, they're hard to recognize because they come through shame. Some gifts, they come through getting knocked down, hardship, straight humiliation. And I think when I was coming up, my mother would tell me these stories about how she had her first kid at 16 years old, pregnant at 15. Now, granted, my mother was the daughter of a preacher. Her father was the pastor of our church. He had four girls. Three of those girls grew up did everything they were supposed to. And they got married to preachers. But my mother was the black sheep. 15 years old, she gets pregnant. 16 years old, she gets a kid. She gets kicked out the house. She's struggling. Now, granted, the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. But, Every time she multiplied and she wound up having six boys and one girl, the people closest to her was telling her, it's a mistake. What are you doing? You don't have a man. Why do you keep having these kids? And to add insult to injury, as her kids was coming up, they was the worst of the bunch. Some out there selling drugs, others in and out of jail. These was the kids that you didn't want to be around. And meanwhile, she got to look her family in the face and them looking at her, shaming her, making her feel like you are the worst thing that came out of this family. But what people didn't see as she was on welfare and would go to Pathmark and I'll never forget those days going to Path Mark and she got her little food stamps and she would stock up the house for the month. I didn't know what it was to have name brand food in the house. Everything we got said no frills. It was white packaging, black letters. So if it was Fruity Pebbles, it just said no frills, Fruity Cereal. Some knockoff name. Everything that she bought into the house that she could afford. The packaging was all off, but it fed us. It was a gift. We ate. And as those same bad kids started to get older and get their act together, and my mother started to get older, there was a relationship that formed between us that was greater than mother and children. Because she had us so young, she grew up with us. And we all was friends, like true friends, and loved her dearly. But I remember in the end, as she started to get up there in age, my mother, she was a home care attendant her entire life. My mother would give you the shirt off her back. She loved caring for people. But that job didn't come with a pension plan. It didn't come with a 401k. It didn't come with retirement benefits. But as she got older, those same kids, 
that everybody told her it's a mistake. They became her blessing. My mother never went to a bank and filled out a mortgage, but those kids bought her her house. Straight cash. My mother didn't know what it was to want after a certain age because those kids, as we started to do our thing in the world, would month over month over month have her on our payroll, sending her checks. So now whatever she was doing out there, whatever money she was making, was gravy because she was well taken care of. And sometimes you got to stop looking at the situation that you're in. It's, this is a problem. I'm cursed. I'm shamed. And start to understand that your gift, it don't always come gift wrapped. You can look at Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury knocked out one of the greatest knockout artists in the heavyweight division of all time. But Tyson Fury, if you ever looked at any of the interviews he's ever done, yes, he had to talk about the fight, but what he really would tell people is, for years, I battled alcoholism. For years, I battled obesity. For years, I battled mental illness and depression. And I have overcome them all. Deontay Wilder is just a man. I have beat the greatest opponent that I could ever face. That guy standing in front of me, he's easy. See, Deontay was looking at this guy fighting for a belt. Tyson Fury had already fought the hardest, the baddest, the toughest opponent that he would ever face in his life. So Deontay, yes, on the outside, he had the proper package. He looked like the most statuesque man to ever walk the earth. He had the greatest knockout record in the history of the heavyweight division. But when it was all said and done, the same thing that would have once been looked at as the worst obstacles in the world what Tyson Fury didn't realize then, it was his greatest gift. And what I'm telling you movers, sometimes you're going through something. It's easy to look at the competition and it looks like they got the proper package. They're well educated. They got the perfect vernacular, the perfect vocabulary. They speak the Queen's English. They can do math problems in their head. And you can look at them and say to yourself, how can I compare? But you don't realize God has already set you up to win. Your gift is already in the package. You're the package. Just dig down deep and pull it out. Every gift doesn't come gift wrapped. And you might not be the prettiest. You might not be the brightest. You might not be the one that everybody looks at as the bravest. Or this is the person that can get the job done. But your gift, it might not be obvious, but it's there already. Dig deep. And it's crazy because when my son was young, I would go out and I would buy him toys. And the toys that I hated the most was the ones that said some assembly required. Because when they say some assembly required, that means it's going to take you hours to put that thing together. And it's the same thing in life. Sometimes God gives us a gift. But there's some assembly required. God 
didn't give us steak dinners and quarts of milk. He gave us a cow. What you do with that cow is your business. God didn't give us buildings. He didn't give us bridges. He didn't give us furniture, cars. What he gave us was natural metals. He gave us wood for the framing trees. He gave us rubber and a brain. It might be some assembly required, but if you dig a little bit deeper, the gift, it ain't always gift wrap, but it's dare movers. Stop doubting yourself. Stop looking at everybody else thinking that they're better than you. I'll never forget when I was coming up and I used to give everybody else so much credit when I got in the music industry because they looked the part. They took their money. They bought jewelry. They bought watches, drove expensive cars. I wasn't on it like that. I could care less about name brands. I could care less about jewelry. For me, I just wanted to do the work and blow. I just wanted to stack my chips. But one day I had to wake up and say, yes, they got the perfect package. But underneath it all, they don't have the gift because the gift was the work ethic. It was the drive. It was the hunger. It was the savagery of eating that no frills of eating when my mother can afford to feed us. All of the intangibles that I came up with, it actually turned out to be the greatest gift in the world because I didn't need the flaws for nobody else. I didn't need to do anything extra to impress anybody else. And I want you movers to understand that sometimes your gift is being knocked down, is being humiliated, is being told you can't do it. Is having no place else to go but forward. And when you do move forward, you realize that you are better than you ever thought you was. You realize that you are more equipped for success than you ever thought you was. But sometimes it has to come from within. Because that's where all gifts come from. So movers, stop looking at everybody and thinking that they are ahead of you. Thinking that your worst mistake is something that is going to deter you and hold you back. Maybe that's exactly what you need to go through. Just so that years later, it could set you up in a way that you take over the game that you take over the industry, that you start putting M's in the bank. You might need that very thing to get you to where you are trying to go. Don't ever forget, yes, on the surface, it's great to have a gift that you're born with. It is great to have a gift that comes to you, gift wrapped and presented to you in a way that you know it's something special in there. But it's a whole different story when you look within and you realize, I got the gift, but every gift, it don't come gift wrapped. Claim your gift, movers. We here for one another, and I just want everybody, and I'm saying this message because I was speaking to somebody, and they couldn't see in themselves what I saw in them. And I was trying my hardest to convince them. The only thing separating you from success is this. It's the way you see yourself. You already got the gift. It just ain't packaged the way you think it should be packaged.